Welcome readers. Today on Book Chat, I am sharing with you Audiophile Magazine's Best of Mystery and Suspense Audiobooks for 2020. Also, I have an exclusive conversation with award-winning audiobook narrator Imogen Church. Stay tuned. Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction Merch Store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and welcome to Book Chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Thanks so much for downloading today's episode. I really appreciate you for being here. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support this podcast by sharing it with some book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. That will really help me out and I appreciate you for doing so. As I mentioned earlier, today's episode has some fun things in store for you. I am sharing Audiophile Magazine's Best of Mystery and Suspense audiobooks for 2020, and I am having an exclusive conversation with audiobook narrator Imogen Church. So let's jump right on in, shall we? If you are unaware, every year Audiophile Magazine puts out a list of best audiobooks, and this year I was happy and fortunate enough to share with you one of my favorite genres lately, and that that is mystery and suspense. If you head on over to shelfaddiction.com, you can not only see all six of these titles, you can listen to samples. And if you click on the cover artwork, you can go to audio files review of these titles. So these are six that they found extremely pleasing and they made the list for this category. So I will just share this list with you. And again, feel free to head on over to shelfaddiction.com to get more of the details and listen to snippets. So this list is in no particular order. So we're just going to jump right on in. The first book is High Five by Joe Ide, read by Zeno Robinson. The next book is The Last Tourist, written by Olin Steenhauer, read by David Pitu. The next book is All the Devils Are Here, written by Louisa Penny, read by Robert Bathurst. Next is The Law of Innocence, written by Michael Connolly, read by Peter Giles. Also, The Searcher, written by Tanya French, read by Roger Clark. Lastly, One by One, written by Ruth Ware and read by Imogen Church, who is here today to talk a little bit about this book. Imogen Church is an award-winning actress and writer. She is best known for her voice work and has narrated hundreds of audiobooks, as well as starred in audio dramas and being the voice of the Harry Potter quiz on Alexa UK and the Wizarding World quiz in the US. Imogen's debut novel, Death by the Burlesque Maiden, inspired by her past life as a burlesque dancer and performance poet, will be out on Audible Originals in early 2021. Imogen is tall, fairly weird, has tattoos, and happily does not fit into any recognizable box in the entertainment industry. Imogen has narrated one by one, but also many more of Ruth Ware's audiobooks, several of which have made their way onto Audiophile's list of best audiobooks in the past, including The Woman in Cabin 10 and The Death of Mrs. Westaway. Without further delay, let's start the conversation. Hi, Imogen. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm excited that you get to join us from all the way across the pond. That's <laughs> that's rare for me to have someone from over there. So I'm so happy you're here. Oh, I'm pleased. Good. It's good to be here. Oh, I love your accent, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so we are here because you have one of your audiobooks celebrated in the 2020 best audio books list put together by audiophile magazine so that's exciting i know right it's awesome i feel like i should buy myself a new frock <laughs> you should wear in the you house. should <laughs> wear in the house obviously because it's 2020 i'll just get dressed up in it and hang around in my bedroom feeling well good. you know you could do like some celebratory instagram post with your new frock <laughs> that's what you yes. do. I like that. I like that. Awesome. So the book that was um, on the list is One by One by Ruth Ware. And I noticed you 
do a lot of her books. Yeah, I mean, I've done all of her. I, I believe she started off writing um, YA stuff. But um, since she's graduated to kind of grown up mysteries, it's been me. I think really she got lumbered with me because I was asked to do her first one when no one knew who she was. And then people just got really into the partnership. And now she can't ditch me. Poor woman. (laughs) (laughs) You guys are stuck with each other. Yes. Yes. Poor thing. I keep telling her, if you want to write a book from a man's perspective, do it expect the wrath of the listeners but do it (laughs) no but you know you guys make a great team like I love the pairing of you two I love it too it's great tell me a little bit about like your listening habits do you listen to audiobooks for fun well I grew up listening to audiobooks which is why I just couldn't believe it when I ended up being paid to do it for a living. That's how I learned to read, really. I absolutely loved audiobooks. But then for a long time, because I am a voracious reader, I was just eye reading. And then Audible kept giving me free credits to listen to books with. And I realized that I was totally hooked. And now I am also a punter. So yeah, I listen all the time, walking the dog, doing the washing up, doing the ironing, having a bath. Yeah, I listen a lot. That's awesome. What have you been listening to lately? Oh my God. I just finished choreography, Corey Feldman's memoir. It was heartbreaking. Oh man. It was so tough. It was really, really, I find myself really interested in memoir actually. Maybe it's because I work on fiction kind of all day, every day, pretty much. Yeah, I listened to Alan Cummings' book before that, Not My Father's Son, and that was also really, really brutal. You've had some uh, heavy (laughs) listening recently. (laughs) I know, right? Is it a 2020 thing? Who knows? Well, you know, people that listen to this podcast are not only readers, they're also audiobook enthusiasts, and sometimes they're people that want to become narrators. So with that in mind, do you have any advice that you like to give people who want to get into what you're doing? Yeah, first of all, be really honest with yourself. Are you obsessed with reading enough? Because some people like the idea of it, but the reality of sitting in a box hour after hour, just you reading, reading, reading. When some people come to maybe do an audition or try it out, it is way too hard and not what they were expecting. So probably be really honest. If you can sit and read uninterrupted for a couple of hours, I certainly can, um, then yeah, that might be the right job for you. But if you find yourself twitching after 20 minutes and you want to go and have a break, that might be a good indicator that sitting in a box and narrating all day is not for you. Um, yeah. And also try, just try it at home. If no one's around or if someone's around, who knows? Just read out loud for as long as you can until you drive your family insane and see how you find it. Oh my gosh. You know what? That is really good advice. I've never heard that one before. It's brand new, (laughs) but I can see your point. Like if you can't even sit there for 20 minutes, you might have a problem. (laughs) Totally. And you know what? Even some really good, really experienced actors will come in and give it a go and go, Oh my God, I suck at this (laughs) and never come back. Yeah. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Oh, that's so crazy. But yeah. Okay. Great news. You guys should listen to Imogen because she is a boss in narration. She knows what she's talking about. So let's talk a little bit about One by One. Can you give us a little bit of the framework um, on that book? Okay. So it is set in a snowy chalet halfway up a mountain and there's an avalanche and the power goes out. And people start to die. So (laughs) it's your classic kind of Agatha Christie type stuck in a snowy chalet with no phone reception, no electricity and no way out because they are literally snowed in up to the tops of the windows. Yeah. Um, So the it is incredibly tense. And the end, which I don't want to give away too much, but the end took it out of me the way the last two characters escape. Um, yeah, it's just, she's, she is an absolute 
queen at tension, mystery, all of that stuff. She really is a, a modern Agatha Christie. So Yeah. There was a lot going on in that book, and there were quite a few characters that you had to perform. Uh, how did you manage to juggle, like, the men, the women, like, the the what, the staff? <laughs> you know, how did you figure them yeah. out? You know what? That was easy compared to doing, like, a sprawling four-book fantasy, say, where you might have 50 different characters and they might come from all over the imaginary globe and sometimes you have to make up an accent for them as in not even an existing accent so it w- that was considerably easier than doing say a sci-fi or a fantasy but yeah I had to go through and make really clear notes about who has what voice who has what relationship to who because when you have a scene and there's seven people in a room all chatting away to each other it's really hard and sometimes accents that characters have do not gel well in conversation so it's really weird if you are trying to talk to yourself as an Australian person and a New Zealand person oh god that's hard Mm -hmm. because they're really similar but they have some really clear differences but to hop in and out of those two accents whilst talking to yourself is that's really tricky you know it's I can I can see that um and actually I'm not good at you know different accents obviously I'm not a narrator but I've got to like ask like how do you figure out and keep track of whose (laughs) accent is what like as you like if you're 50 percent in I don't know you took a day off (laughs) you come back (laughs) how does Um, that work (laughs) <laughs> yeah, if it's if it's the if it's really really dense with characters, I have a whole page that sometimes I just have to take a pause and refer back to, mm-hmm. and remind myself who this person is. And it might not just be accent; it might be their age or their size or a speech impediment or something like that. It is quite a lot of work. So again, that is something. For me personally, the way I narrate, I enjoy the performative aspect of it and giving everyone really distinct voices. So obviously, if you want to get into it, you need to feel, even if you're not really, really hot on accents, you need to be able to differentiate those characters. Otherwise, the listener is just going to get so lost. Yeah. As a listener, it's really important because like, you can tell with you, who is who you really can and sometimes that gets lost in audiobooks and it's so sad when that happens you're like wait who's talking wait what happened (laughs) well as I'm now a punter as an adult you know moving on from kids books that I grew up with yeah I find the same and actually it really is true that the narrator can make or break it I've had to return a couple of books because I don't even know what it was, but something about the narrator just, it just really turned me off. It didn't work for me. I couldn't see the pictures in my head. So yeah, it's Mm -hmm. important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So with all of the characters in this book, do you have a favorite that you liked narrating for the best? I liked Danny because he was proper South London, like lad, but he was also gay, completely not a big deal about it. And he would swim in the pool at the chalet in gold hot pants that said boy. <laughs> <laughs> I just had such a clear image of his tight little butt with this word boy written across it on these gold lame swim shorts. Oh my gosh. Oh, so, yeah. oh that's enjoyed- awesome. <laughs> That is awesome. Oh my gosh. I love it. After you finish this, are you doing something else for Ruth Ware next? What's what's up next for you? Or do you have something outside of this going on? Well, Ruth does about a book a year. So every summer I'm sitting around going, yeah, I get to do a Ruth Ware. Although we did do an online murder mystery event to celebrate the publishing of the book. So it was Ruth um, as this old fusty crime writer Clive Barking and me and a bunch of her crime writing pals and we played all these ridiculous characters trying to solve a crime and people came and watched and it was great fun so we did do that together oh my gosh that (laughs) sounds really awesome when was that is it available to Um, see later 
Oh, I don't know, actually. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it is, but I know you can buy a version of the game to play at home with your friends. That was oh. on the UK pub date, which was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. We did that awesome. together. But yeah, I just do books back to back, really. And I write as well. So I've got my own novel coming out in February. I didn't know you were a writer. <laughs> so what I do you start, write? Um, well, I, I used to be a performance poet. So I do a lot of poetry, but it's really wrong, like satirical comic stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And then I wrote a lot of film screenplays one of which potentially is being made um and then audible said to me would you write us a book that you can narrate as well and I went yeah why not Mm -hmm. so they asked for a crime novel possibly because that's what I'm really well known for um so obviously I I kind of write a crime novel (laughs) Mm. it's more of a comedy crime caper set in an alternate world of like steampunk and strippers so that'll be out in February. So that's weird. I'll be narrating Steam that in a couple punk of weeks. And strippers? Yeah, it's a it's a that is an interesting combo. Okay, I gotta check this out. Okay. <laughs> it's a murder mystery set in a burlesque yeah. club. Um, and it's kind of inspired by the years when I was a burlesque performer and okay. performance poet and stripters. So yeah. Wow. Okay, so I might have to see if you're open to come on and talk about that because I feel like I need to read that. And I, I feel like I'm going to need to talk about that because <laughs> those things kind of just set off alarms in my head. Like, wait, what is this? What, I, I what did see. she just say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course, you know, get the inside scoop on, you know, the, the backstory of things. I got to get that. <laughs> well, it kind of relates to how I even got into audiobooks, but that's like a, we could save that for next time. It's a okay. long story. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, something that I do here for interviews, and I didn't warn you, but it's called a lightning round. Are you interested <gasps> in a lightning round? I'm very interested. Okay, yes. <laughs> listeners love this and I feel like I can't prep people because it's not as fun when you prep people <laughs> it's not it's not lightning then is it lightning no like lightning reactions yeah I just think some people are scared but I know you're not scared you're not scared at all <laughs> no. no okay so let's do it I have a bunch of questions you just answer as many as you can as quick as you can it's only 60 seconds so I even have a timer because I will go over and keep asking more and more questions (laughs) if I don't set the timer. Okay. So let's jump into it. This should be fun. Are you ready? I'm ready. Physical books or ebooks? Physical. Hero or villain? Villain. Tea or coffee? Uh, Coffee. If you could only narrate one genre forever, what would it be? Comedy! <laughs> Bookstore or library? Oh, library. Meditation or yoga? Oh my god. Coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Fiction or nonfiction? Fiction. Beach or mountains? <gasps> mountains. If you could pick one superpower, what would it be? It would be. Oh my god, that's a really difficult one. It would be the power to have coffee available at any time of the day. All right. Standalone <laughs> titles or series? Standalone. All right, that's time. <laughs> <laughs> Practically three seconds over, but you see how hey. I do. I just I keep going. That was awesome. <laughs> that was great. I like that. Oh, yeah. Well, I always like to do that. It's good fun. So thanks for doing it. And thank you for coming on. It's been so fun. <laughs> it's all right. It's good fun. It's always it's nice quick to and talk fun. about your job. <laughs> yeah. So be sure to follow both Audiophile Magazine and Imogen Church on social media and pick up a copy of One by One on audiobooks. The link for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. So again, it's been a pleasure, Imogen. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for having me. It's been lovely. Absolutely. So thanks for listening, everyone. And until next time, take care of yourselves.
If you enjoyed today's book chat episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy all things bookish, including author interviews. Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy reading.